First of all, we're going to start with the back uh, board to me, and I'm going to place this, try to center this. We've got five, five pleats, so you always want to center the third pleat in the middle of the board here. And as I do that, I'm going to make sure that the, on the inside, the, uh, the panel goes to the right side. So as I do this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it goes to the right side, the middle part. And then we line this up. take both of the straps and get them out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to take these apart and on the, what I consider to be the far side, this is the bottom piece, I'm going to find the where it bends. And I'm only concerning myself with the rectangle uh, material about this far because the crotch is right here so I'm just going to concern myself up to that point right here to make sure that as I run my hands across here I don't feel any lumps underneath here so it's completely flat. Then I'm going to take the near side and where the bend is I'm going to find the fold line here and I'm going to place this next to that fold line not exactly on the fold line but maybe about an eighth inch away from the fold line because of the thickness of the material all the way up here, make sure it's a little, it's real close to the line. And once again, I'm going to stop right at the crotch here. So this again is just only a rectangle piece of uh, material, rectangle about this big. And then the far side, make sure that I'm folding it on the crease, not near the crease, but exactly on the crease. Stretch the material out, find where this uh, bends right here, and, and put that down there. Hold that, and this time I'm going to go all the way to the top. I'm going to make sure that I have no uh, bumps underneath, no uh, material is folded, and I'm just going to take it straight up to the top. So now we've got a rectangle all the way to the top this time on the third uh, try. Then here, once again, make sure we fold at the crease, stretch the material. We don't want to be near, near the fold, but we want to be exactly on the fold. As you can see here, maybe with the light, you can see that this has actually got a double fold here now where the, the uh, crease line has been, somebody has folded this so it doesn't, it isn't exactly on the crease, but so I'm going to find that original crease. I'm going to pinch it and bring it back. So this is what I mean about uh, being precise, is that you can be close and you can create it so that you lose the crease eventually. So it's important if you want to maintain a real sharp crease is to always go back to that line. So what I'm doing here is I'm returning the material back to the original crease. There, like that. Then back on this side over here. Same idea. Precise, precise. And all the way to the top. And again, this one, you can see how the material is kind of rolling. So I'm going to roll it back. So I get the original line back. So now I have, when I run my hand here, I don't feel any uh, bumps or anything like this on, underneath the material. So I've got all these nice and, if you look from this angle here, you can see that all these folds are pretty much exactly on the crease lines. Okay, it's not near, but it's exactly on them. Grab a hold of that, make sure we don't let that uh, go away. I'm gonna fold the, uh, the backboard this way because I can, I can keep the material straighter this way. And again, I'm stretching the material so we don't have any uh, creases in there. I reverse that. And I hold here to make sure I don't lose all that work we did. And I'm going to pull it this way so this will gently uh, drag out some of the creases that might have occurred when we flipped it over. Some of the folds. I'm going to make sure that the third um, fold on here on your comma is the dead center on the on your backboard and this this line here lines up with the bottom of the board here like that and over here I'm just going to allow these folds to fall naturally where they uh, normally would I'm not trying to force it I'm just going to gently just guide them back to where they were this is just the initial movement initial uh, fold 
And then I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to make sure that these all should be pretty much uh, equal distance all the way across. So I'm trying to make that all of these spaces equal all the way across here. And then if I do that, then most of the rest of this, the comma will lie pretty flat. Now, the next part I'm going to do is I'm going to look down over here. And you notice that the, the top is overlapping the bottom by just a little bit. I want these to be equal. So just grab the bottom. And I'm going to take the top over here. I'm going to tug it a little bit. So now that they become even over here, I want to make sure that this is as equal as possible here. Okay, so we get that straight. And if I do that, most of everything else would be lying pretty flat. If you look at the whole the comma, everything is pretty flat. Then just take these and roll them over to where the uh, fold originally was. What you want to end up with is something that's parallel all the way across here. The comma is wider at the bottom, so you'll notice that these gradually get, uh, they taper out. It's wider at this end, and they get smaller at this end. But that's so that this will be parallel over here. Traditionally, at this point, we fold this so we have uh, one-third, one-third to the bottom of this line here. What I'm going to do, so if I did the thirds, it would be something like about this big. Or actually, a little bit larger than that. It will be more like this. A little bit larger than that, probably. Something like that. This is, this is about a, th uh, a third fold here. And you get, you'll end up with a comma that's about oh, a square like this. What I'm going to do is something a little different because I like to, it fits in my, in my bag better if, it, if I have a smaller rectangle. So I'm going to go for fourths. I'm going to fold it here. And this way I'm going to get four folds out of this. I'm going to go one, two, so I got one, two, three, and then this is the fourth one here like this. And what this does is it gives me a rectangle rather than a large square. It gives me more of a rectangle. I'm going to take these, the top strap, fold it under where it bends here. The bottom, fold it under. And so what I have here is the straps come up pretty much parallel at this point right here to the sides. Like that. And then I'm going to take the, the bottom one, as you can see here, it's coming out. So I'm just going to fold that at 90 degrees. This one at a 90 degree. And then these guys. So these straps, most straps will uh, fold good if you fold it in fourths. In other words, I go this way and fourths here like this. And I think I'll leave that. And this side also. Then I'm going to take this. These are coming out 90 degrees to the comma. I'm going to bring this up to the center. And right where the two meet right there, I'm just going to make it flat. Make sure that these are not uh, getting scrunched or anything. Keep them as flat as possible. And do the same with the opposite side. What I did was uh, the length of this is longer than this over here. So I want to shorten that up. So I'm going to actually fold that under a little bit. Then I'm going to take this side, do the same. And then again, I'm, I'm uh, going to fold it over because it is long. I'm going to stuff it under this strap and pull it through. And there you have your fold.